minus 5, 4, 3, 2, X minus 1, fire. of the unknown come transcribed tales of new dimensions in time and space. These are stories of the future, adventures in which you'll live in a million, could be years on a thousand maybe worlds. The National Broadcasting Company, in cooperation with Galaxy Science Fiction Magazine, presents... X, 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 minus, 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 minus,
They seek freedom. Brothers? Those spiders? All living creatures are our brothers. On Mars as on Earth. Oh, wait a minute. Bert Alstrom at False Wells told me there was a screwball hedge preacher over there hollering about letting the spiders loose off the reservation. Let no man call his life his own. No man or tribe nor nation. <laughs> I guess that's you, all right. Yeah, Bert told me they called you Crazy John. Oh, well, I don't suppose there's any harm in you. Come on, fill up your tank of the air still. You can even have supper with us. You would be happy to. We? What do you mean, we? Kanto Carr and myself. That spider? Ah, oh, no. I have a Martian sitting down to eat with me. Now, you come on, no. Thank you, sir, no. Well, my brother is not welcome. I cannot go. Well, search yourself. I'll, uh, get the key to the water tower. Come out here. All right, Dad. Put away the guns. We won't have any trouble for these two. <laughs> The old man filled his tank at the air sill tower, and the Martian went through the ash pile for half-burned fuel brick. When we went in the house for supper, I could see them silhouetted against the fire. The old man with his wild hair and beard, and the thin, spidery arms and legs of the Martian. Dad. What now? Were the Martians always on the reservation? Since the outpost three massacre, they have been... What was that? Back before you were born, they lived wild in the mountains up north. Were they fierce? Fierce enough. There's only one place for them spiders. Behind wire. Yeah, it sure is. Out in the dooryard, the campfire flickered at the base of the water tower. The first of the Martian moons had set. The other wouldn't rise for several hours. I could hear the sand peepers out in the desert as I stood there. The old man and the Martian were sitting on the ground, huddled close to the fire. It gets cold fast on the desert when the sun goes down. Did you, boy? You can come up to the fire if you'd like. My dad wouldn't like it. All right. But I'm not afraid of no spider. No. There's nothing to be afraid of. How come his arms are all skinny? How skin? Does he talk? Yes. His name is Kantal Kar. It is, huh? Hello. Hello, boy. He talks funny. It is not my language. Why isn't he on the reservation? You can get in trouble helping spiders to escape. He is my brother. He was caged. When my brothers were in bondage, I came to them and said, Lo, the time has come for deliverance. You talk funny, too. Is it true that you want to let all the spiders off the reservation? No man has the right to imprison the innocent. My dad says the spiders are treacherous, cowardly, murdering savages. That's what he says. Boy, there was a time on this world when there were no earthmen, when the ships and the machinery of Earth were unknown. Then the people of the highlands lived in peace. They who bring not peace but the sword will perish by the sword. Then the ships came down with the machines for digging the inside of the ground. And the island people were as numerous as the grass. Today they are a handful, starving, dying behind the wire. But the reservation isn't so bad. Our home is in the mountains of the north, not the desert. I heard a voice which cried out to me in the desert... Go to your brothers. Do they really call you crazy, John? I have been called many things. You really think we ought to let all those old spiders off the reservation? Boy, we die here in the desert. We die in the sun and of the sicknesses you have brought from Earth. That's because Martians are just weak. I bet I could knock you down myself. You could. We are a different people. We have not strength of muscle of earth men. But we will not stay here to die. You won't get off the reservation. The patrol takes care of that, all right. They won't let any stinking old spiders out. Even in the minds of children, this 
planted the poison of evil. How long? How long? That night through the window, I could see the flicker of the old man's campfire. He was walking up and down now, shouting, singing hymns verse after verse, his white beard catching the light as he passed behind the fire. The Martian sat slumped over, his thin, spindly arms folded across the huge barrel chest that had developed over the centuries as the air of Mars thinned and escaped into space. In the morning, I looked out and they were gone. Looking back now, we wonder how they did it. The high voltage wire around the reservation carried a fatal charge. The patrolman in the tower had 50 caliber machine guns. The desert around the camp was mined heavily. And yet, at dawn, August 7th, 1997, they broke out. I was down at the dried-up canal bed hunting sand peepers when my father came running after me. Al! Al! Here I am. Come on, back to the house. What's the matter, Dad? Now, shut up and run! What is it? Spiders must have loose. Red Ostrom radioed in. Did they come in here? They're headed this way, murdering devils. Did they kill anybody? Six patrolmen when they busted through the wire. Now, get inside. What are you going to do, Dad? Why well, Rick take Adams and then across the gates. You get in there and get the guns out. I got the rifles and shoved a full clip in each one. Then I slipped a primer fuse in the homemade grenades and lugged them out on the porch. Dad was running lead wires back to the detonator from a half keg of Adamson A he'd set across the gate. Ah, that's set. Here on those rifles. Will they be here soon? You can see the dust over the rise. Murdering spiders. What do they do? I don't know. Now make sure you get a good sight, Al. No waste the bullets. There they are, Dad. There they come. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold up. I want to get a good shot. Let them get closer. Dad, that's crazy John up in front. There. He's taller than the spiders. You can see his beard. Yeah, you're right. The renegade rat. Probably helped him break out of the reservation. Now listen, Al. If anything happens to me, you light out back to the shed. You can hide out in the empty ore bins till they go away. You got that? All right, Dad. The spider's shouting something, Dad. Well, it's probably a trick. Get down, little lad. We're in the way. Yeah, I got him clear now. Right in the head. No, up a little now. Oh, I got him. I got him. Dad, look out. They've got guns. Down. Get down. Get down. Get out, Al. Get out to the shed. But, Dad, you're hit. Go on. The spiders are going to rush. Get going. I can't leave you. Shut up. Get out of here. You're here. <laughs> Get out there. I ran back through the house to the shed. And behind me, I could hear the Martian sweeping up the dooryard. Then suddenly, the ground shook. And I could feel the dull concussion waves hit my ears as the Adamson A exploded. I could hear the high whispered screams of the Martians and the rattle of fragments on the metal roof of the shed. I dived into the empty ore bin and slammed the hatch almost shut. I crouched there watching the thin edge of light that filtered through, listening to the brittle tramping of Martian feet on the board floor of our house. The shooting had stopped, and the shots had died away. I sat there waiting, and then suddenly a shadow fell across the edge of light, and the hatch slid open on top of me. You leave me alone. I'll kill you. Boy, I've been looking for you. Where's my dad? What did you do to my dad? He's dead. You killed him. You and those spiders. You killed my father. Come out of there, boy. You let go of me, you murderer. Come on, out. I'll kill you. I'll kill all those stinking murdering spiders. They are our brothers, boy. 
Your father shot without warning and the fire was returned against my orders. Before he died, he set off the explosive. I hope he killed them all. He killed many. You did not have to shoot. We came to get water for the journey. You mean you weren't going to attack us? Our brothers came in peace. They're going home to their mountains. We came to get water for the journey. You mean you just wanted water? You... You... Dad! Dad! <laughs> we were sure. We'll have to leave him here with water and supplies. No, just the crew would question him. We need the time. He goes with us. He can't. It's straight across the desert to the mountains. He'll die. John, since the Earthmen came to Mars, the Highlanders have died like the grass in the hot sun. We are going home. One life cannot stop us. <laughs> They tore the Adamson airsdale from the tower and mounted it on poles. They piled our supplies in the yard and loaded them on their backs. And then they started. I marched with the old man at the head. And the column stretched out behind us on the desert. Women, children, the sick and the dying... Some showing the signs of the diseases that were trivial to the Earthmen, but deadly to the Martians. Chicken pox, German measles, and the bronchial infections that raced through the vast areas of Martian lungs, eating away the tissue till death came in a last spasm of coughing. I turned to look back at our house, but the sun was behind it, blinding red. And the old man pulled me around as he marched. His eyes fixed on the horizon where far to the north rose the cool mountains that were the ancient home of the Highlanders. Fourteen of the Martians died the first day. They dropped to the side of the column when they could go no further and died. The march went on. The sun burned down in the day. The air shimmered with the heat. And at night, under the cold racing light of the twin moons, the winds cut at tattered clothing and scattered the feeble fires that darted the campsites. On the fifth day, we swung wide to avoid a mining settlement, but not wide enough. They were in ambush behind a pile of rocks. Don't! Don't worry! Why aren't the spiders fighting back? Come on back! Oh, yeah! We're giving you your last chance to get back to the reservation. I will shoot the whole lot of you. Let us go in peace. Who's that? You. What are you doing with them spiders? That crazy girl. A voice cries out to the universe. Your brothers must have justice. We'll give them justice. I shall lead them home. Home to the promised rest. Home to the mountains. March forward. March forward. they marched, and the earthmen fired as fast as they could reload. A Martian would spin and drop as the heavy caliber bullets shook his bones to brittle fragments, but the march went on. We wound across the desert in wild zigzags, following the paths the old man had traveled through the years. Only once a patrol plane hovered on the horizon and then shot away. The days went on. The weeks. And the Martians died. They died of exhaustion. They died of the disease we had given them. And they died of thirst. The Adamson still could produce 27 units of water an hour, no more. And on that, they died of thirst. Yeah, boy. Here's your water. That's more than the others got. Take it. But it's yours. You're giving me your water. It will be provided to me. He that brings justice to his brothers will drink deep of the water of righteousness. 
He that leads his brothers to their promised rest will savor the cool drafts of the mercy of heaven. Here. <laughs> Drink your water, boy. Across the desert, from the Kalmak Canal to Fever Dip, past the towering mesas of the Higgins Badlands, across the dry sea bottoms, they marched. On the 54th day of the march, we halted at evening. The air was thinner and colder now. The rations had long since been exhausted. And around the campfires, they cooked the hard, bitter kernels of the dogbush nut that grew on spiny stalks like earth cactus. I lay down to sleep wrapped in the old man's coat. Early in the morning, before sunrise, I woke suddenly. The ground mist that had covered the desert the night before was lifting slowly. And I saw the old man standing by the burned-out fire, the vapor swirling around his legs, and the cold light of the false dawn edging his wild beard. Go back to sleep, boy. I can't. The end is near. I've led them through the wilderness dry shod across the seas. And before us lie the mountains. You mean we're almost there? When the mist is taken from the eyes of man, the place of refuge can be seen. You mean the mountain? <laughs> it's over. We're there. I have led them to their home. And I must go back to the desert. You mean alone? No, even now. I hear a voice in the wind. Carry the message to the men of earth. Bring to this new world the message of the old. All beings created in the universe are my brothers. And he that harms my brother... Arms me. <coughs> Goodbye, boy. You'll be safe now. Goodbye, John. Goodbye. The Martians found him 500 yards from the camp. Dead. He had given me his water. He had divided his ration among the sick. And yet his gaunt, tall body had lasted till the march was done, till the mountains were in sight. For now the mist rose, and before us towered the highlands, the tall, green mountains, and the cool sky. The march was over. Of the 7,000 Martians who started, 900 were alive. They gathered now on the rise of ground and faced the hills. Their thin bodies wavered as they stood. And some dropped to the ground as they stood there. But there was a light of hope in their large, staring eyes. Most of them had died. But they had died on the way home. And now the march was over. Patrol planes were spotted on the horizon, and within ten minutes, they had landed. The Martians stood silently as the squads piled out and set up the 50 caliber machine guns and petroleum gel flamethrower. All right, you spiders, hands up and stay together. Gather in a bunch and don't try anything. Sergeant. Yes, sir. Shoot the first spider that moves and shoot to kill. All right, come on. Uh, Where's the boy? There was a boy reported. Here I am. Uh, you all right, kid? Uh, they didn't hurt you? No. No, I'm all right. John gave me his water ration. Oh, uh, the leader, eh? I've got a warrant for him. Where is he? There. He's dead. Oh. Well, just as well. I'd hate to be him in front of a settler's jury. What are you going to do to them? Oh, the spiders? Uh, you see those transport planes coming in? We're going to ship them all back to the reservation where they belong. You mean take them all back? Lock, stock, and barrel. They'll be back behind wire before tonight. Hi, Sergeant. 
Get them all get up in groups of 50. The first transports are coming in. You can't. You can't do that. What are you talking about, kid? Oh, you can't take them back. They're home. John said they were home. Oh, you don't understand. You didn't see them. Oh, what's the matter with you, son? The desert got you? What do you care what happens to the spiders? Bunch of murdering cowards anyway. No. No, they're not cowards. They couldn't be. I saw them marching till they couldn't walk. And they aren't even as strong as I am. Ah, you take it easy, kid. You're, you're all right. Now we rescued you. You don't have to worry about these spiders anymore. You can't take them back. It isn't fair. I won't let you. No, no. I won't let no, no. you. <laughs> I won't let hey, you. Hey, hey, let go of me. Hey, let... Sergeant. Yes, sir. Yeah, you can feel this crazy kid off me. They're home. Can't you understand? You can't take them back. All right, now, kid. Easy, <laughs> easy. Must be the dark. <laughs> kind of really safe now. Yeah, I guess that's it. <laughs> You spiders, step it up, move along. These transport planes, roll over now. You're headed right back to the reservation. They separated them in groups of 50 and loaded them in the planes. 900 out of 7,000. And soon the first big bellied ships waddled out on the hard sands and lifted slowly into the air, headed back to the south. Flying over the trail of dead and dying who started on the march to the highlands. The march to home. Come on now, kid. You'll feel better as soon as you get back to civilization. And don't worry about them spiders. They're taken care of now. took off, I looked once more at the green mountains, towering through the mist. And then, just before the motor raced, I saw John. Crazy John. Propped up against a dognut bush where the Martians had placed him. The wind from the south gave the wild hair and beard a rippling life. He faced the hills. The home and the rest he had promised his brothers as he led them through the wilderness of Mars. You have just heard X-1 presented by the National Broadcasting Company in cooperation with Galaxy Science Fiction Magazine, which this month features an informative article by Willie Lay on Tracking Down the Sea Serpent. Galaxy Magazine, on your newsstand today. Tonight by transcription, X-1 has brought you The Martian Death March, written especially for radio by Ernest Kenoy. Featured in the cast were Ralph Bell, David Pfeffer, Richard Hamilton, Roger DeCoven, and Lawrence Kerr. The narrator was Ralph Camargo. This is Fred Collins. X-1 was directed by Daniel Sutter and is an NBC Radio Network production. Oh.